April 15th of this year, um, there was a young man in Iowa named Kenneth. And I have to back up. Last fall, he came out to his high school, freshman. He came out, and he was bullied for being gay. And a lot of kids in those school kept on telling him, you know, if I was just you for being gay, I would just kill yourself. <coughs> You're not worthy. And they kept telling him this, and they kept telling him this. And of course, the problem that I have is a lot of the parents don't know that it's going on until you happen to open up somebody's Facebook page and it's like 99.9% .9 of the parents don't understand or are in shock that their kid has been bullied at all or they had been the bully. On April 15th, Kenny took everybody's suggestion from their school that was bullying him and he took a shotgun and killed himself. April 15th, just not too long ago. And I will tell you, when these students are in school, what they're trying to do is survive. There's no learning going on at all. Because if you're in a classroom and you're being bullied, what I would be worried about and what a lot of those students are worried about is how am I going to get from point A, so let's say I'm in a math class, to go to my English class down the hall, how am I going to get there quick enough so somebody has a trip me in the hallway, says something to me, slams me in a locker, does something socially out loud in the hallway to demean me. And that's what's happening in our schools. But when you're saying things on national TV and quoted about gay people, you will find that kids get bits and pieces of that and their parents remark on that at home and some of their parents remark and say, you know, I agree with what they say. Gay people should be married. Gay people, you know, are all going to hell or we're not going to have gay marriage in this particular state because it's something they don't believe in. When kids hear that at home, it only gives them fuel for their fire when they go to school and they're able to pick somebody out if they're gay or lesbian. Now, I want you to know it's more than the gay, lesbian, and transgender individuals at school are being bullied. You could look different, you could be overweight, you could walk with a limp, you could have glasses, you could be wealthy, you could buy your clothes from a second class or a second hand store and be judged. It could be anything. And it's unfortunate because a lot of that stuff happens at home. And if we're not attacking bullying at, at the home or at school, we're not coming full circle with our students. So she comes back and I said, do you want me to tell you that I'm gay? Do you want me to tell you that I'm homosexual? Yes, I am, and I'm proud of it. You hear the wind go through the top of the house. She goes, well, good. She turns around, slings open the front door. She's a big drama queen, by the way. We got in the front yard. How many of you have ever seen the show of Vita or know the position when you meet it's like this on the balcony? <laughs> Don't cry for me, Argentina. Okay. She did that pose in the front yard, screaming, I have a gay son. I'm like shaking, my son is gay. I'm thinking of the scene out of Young Frankenstein, with the torches, and then I kill a monster. It's going to happen in my front yard. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. It's a light, but I came out. Uh, in 90, my brother came out in 95. I was floored uh, because I had a conversation with my he's in Orlando. You know, I was like, go down and visit him to do the whole Disney thing. And um, my brother said to me on the phone, well, when you come down here, I, there's something I need to tell you. And I said, well, what is that? He goes, well, I'll wait till you get down here. I just kind of lead a private life. I'm like, you know, it'd be like if Sean told me, on a Friday, he says, hey, I got some really great gossip to tell you about. I can't tell you right now. I'll tell you Monday when I see you in class. Like, yeah, right, like that's going to happen. Because I'm like, you know? So I just said to my brother, because I, it was in the back of my mind, he might be gay because of a comment my dad made many years ago prior to that. And I said, well, why don't you just tell me right now? And my brother struggled. He's very quiet, very timid. And he goes, I'm one, too. <laughs> So I was trying to like relieve the tension up and talk to him like, you know, I didn't want to destroy him or my relationship, this new relationship with him. And so I said, oh my God, I don't have a brother, I have a sister. <laughs> and my brother screamed out laughing, he thought that was funny. Well, it wasn't funny, it was in 95 when he told my mother he was gay via telephone and my brother called up almost in tears 
uh, talking to me, and he goes, I told mom I was gay. And I said, well, how did that go? And my mother said to him, well, Douglas, at least you didn't come out of my womb. Destroyed my brother. We no longer have a relationship. Uh, my mother has decided as a mother that she is done with her motherly duties. And so she's basically done. She sent us our baby pictures. She's done. If you're a parent in here, if you're a parent to a straight child, a bi child, a transgender child, a gay child, or a lesbian, I'm asking you, do not do that. It will destroy your child. And luckily, I have people that love me, and so does my brother, and we're fine. But, again, I'm going back to don't change your child. Love them for who they are and what they're going to contribute to themselves and to society. Because if you're going to try to change them, you're stifling a lot of growth and a lot of love. There's going to be people in our, in our world that are never going to be convinced. I mean, or, or be, you know, part of our party, if you want to say, or it sounds kind of taggy, but just part of the community. There, there are going to be people that like that. There's going to be people out there now that, um, for whatever their own issues are. But I think as far as hate goes, you know, the hater is on a journey because it's, a, it's, a, it's this senseless thing of power. You know, their whole thing is, I'm feeling great about myself because you don't. My self-esteem is really bad and I'm going to have a sense of this power over you and over the community. That's, and Henderson and McKinney were just like that. You know, they, had, uh, they didn't have a lot of things going for them and it's this senseless power, this control factor. Hate is about controlling and fear. Straight on, controlling and fear. And I think once the hating stops, they're going to have to deal with their own pain. I can't even begin to explain how much it hurt that the voters of the state of California were able to take away the very thing that's important to us as a couple and a family. We felt helpless. We were in Michigan unable to do anything, unable to cast our vote, and as our own state had already gone down that horrible road several years ago. I think it's time that we go down a brand new road. I'm going to keep it short, but I want you all to remember, please do not let this die with a whimper. Keep this momentum going. The worst that you can do is walk away today and do nothing. Be the voice of yourself. Be the voice of your community. Get out there. Be strong. And know that our time has come, and it's come now.